Hello, hello everybody. Thank you so much, Chanel. Hello everyone. Happy Wednesday afternoon. We're back for another class. My name is Leigh Bella Ralston. I'm with Faber Castell USA, and it is a pleasure to be here with all of you guys. Thank you for taking some time out of your precious day to spend some time with me and with this class that we're going to do today. I hope everyone's excited because can you believe it's September? I mean, come on, I know I'm getting older, I'm turning 40 in a couple of days, but this is all I talk about how fast the days are. I'm like, can you believe it's Friday? Can you believe it's Monday? But I hope I'm not the only one here. So how's everyone doing? I, I see, hi, Lakita, hello. So I hope that you're all doing well. Did you guys had a great three day long weekend? Oh. Trust me, I finished a big, big project. So the three days, I'm like, I am not going to do anything. I'm not going to lift a finger, but I did play though. I was able to scrapbook. <laughs> so, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm turning 40. It's exciting. Super exciting. All right. So before we get started, of course, I would love to know, uh, any one of you here been doing some type of bullet journaling or some type of planning? Um, I want to quickly talk to you guys about what kind of system I'm doing um, and what I'm working on and what is bullet journal? So are you guys familiar with the term bullet journal? Bullet journal is a term that actually Ryder Carroll was the one who came up with this bullet journaling. Basically, there's a lot of mis misconception about bullet journaling. You know, everyone think like um, you have to have a lot of supplies to do bullet journaling. That's one. Second is that you have to be an artist. Is you have to draw or write well to be, you know, to do bullet journaling. Nope, that's wrong again. So many other things that people think you have to buy the best planner or the best notebook or the best supplies really you can do a bullet journal with a pencil in a notebook. It has doesn't have to be a fancy notebook, really. You know, it can be just like some composition notebooks and like that. But it it is just a place to plan. Basically, I personally use it for brain dump. I have a lot of lists. And if I have like, this is the number one lie I tell myself, I don't need to write that down. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> Trust me, I never remember it. <laughs> so it is important to write it down. So my problem now is, I don't know which notebook I wrote it down. I have so many notebooks. Like I knew, I knew I wrote it down somewhere. So sometimes that's another problem for me. But I want to share with you just quickly what type of planners I have. Um, and then if you have like a favorite notebook of yours that you're using, you know, if you don't mind sharing that on the chat section so everyone can see as well. So I'm going to go head over to the overhead so we can look at some of my planners here. So when you're doing any type of bullet journaling, like what I said, you can use many different notebooks. You might hear the traveler's notebook. This is a traveler's notebook right here where it's kind of like a binder that you can refill and add your own notebook to it. So it's more of a narrow, I think it's an A5 size height also, but it's much, um, it's not as wide as an A5. This one is called the standard traveler's notebook size. So I use this one for my documenting. As you can see here, I love documenting my children, what I ate, any new restaurants that we went at. So more like a scrapbooking, right? So this is the TN that I'm using. I also have one mainly just for journaling. My some Sometimes I add photos, most of the time just my writing. I love keeping a journal and I, this is something that I've been doing since I was a child, but of course my way and my process has evolved after so many years, you know, and also I just like keep trying new stuff. So I don't like to follow trends, although trends are really good because then it gives me an opportunity to really see and um, play around things that, Oh, you know what? I like that size too, or things like that. But something that I don't normally would follow what people are just doing. If, you know, some people just like to do it for planner, we all have different 
aesthetic. That's what my daughter would say. We all have different aesthetic and different style. Some people like shabby chic, you know, um, with florals, lots of botanicals. Some people like it where it's a more of a vintage look. They are using like old paper from um, the old times, like old a piece of book, an old book, or just a regular style of vintage scrapbooking that you can buy uh, anywhere that you'd like. So this one is a traveler's notebook. I also use a ring binder like this. And then I use this one mainly for all my planning. So I, I am not someone that uses a different planner for home and a different planner for work. I just have everything at one place. So I love the ring binder system because once you're done with your papers, your planners and all that, you can just take it out and then replace, refill with a new one. It also gives me an excuse to use many different types of ring binders. <laughs> so it's like, it depends on your mood. I want a pink, I want a blue, I want a red, you know, just an excuse to buy everything. And that really helps me a lot. For example, these are all our classes that we did this year. So from January, until October is what, we're, what I have here in my calendar. And this was not part of the notebook. I just use a regular dot grid, an A5 size, and I just kind of created my own grid. And so now I know which ones we've done already. So it's like, okay, we worked on, you know, a bullet journal on January about this topic. So I know not to repeat that again and kind of gives me an idea and say, okay, what is there? What is left? And then I'm also using the paper to create my own calendar, although you don't have to, because sometimes it really does put a toll on you, especially when you're like, okay, I just want to plan. So basically you can use your own, uh, a different layout that's already has the dates and that, but I still use and add my own cute drawings and add my own um, florals in here and doodles and stuff because it makes it so it makes it very personal, you know, because who likes to just write down bills? I mean, come on, <laughs> it's our everyday life. We go to the bills again. Oh yeah, I'm going to write it down. This is due on Monday, but that's life. So why not make it fun and then make your own planners, your own agenda and your journals yours, you know, make it really personal. All right. So that's just one sample. That's my ring binder. Um, and then Another ones that they're using are just regular notebooks. And that's what I'm, I have in here. So there are different types. You can find lined if you want something like a lined notebook. Um, I love the grid like this. And there are some that is dot grid as well. So this one has like that square grid. And then this one, this one is new. <laughs> I have to break it in. This one is just dot grid. Hold on. Okay. So I'm just going to use this grid right here. And one second. All right. Okay. And so for this class, I'm also going to be using a pencil, an eraser. I'm just using a regular HB pencil nothing fancy. And then I'll be using some colored pencil. I, I want to talk to you why I love using a colored pencil also. Um, but of course, this is just my personal choice for today. I love using watercolors as well. And then I'm going to be using some pit artist pens. No, I'm not going to be using all of these. <laughs> and this is a lot, but I just wanted to show you guys what are the different tips that, um, comes the pit artist okay but the black one comes in many different selection of tips you have the um 1.5 the bullet tip you have a brush there's a soft brush there's also a fine medium and then there's a super fine which is the s and then if you want much thinner than that there's the extra super fine and then there also is a calligraphy which is the letter c and then there's a soft chiseled, which I don't know where mine is. And then here we go. But I think I'm going to use the super fine, the S and the brush. And for the type of drawing that I'm, we're going to do today, I think I'm going to choose the brown, but it's okay. The dark sepia is what I have. 
So the super fine is a 0.3. If you guys are wondering, I know I personally like using a much finer tip when I am writing. Um, but when I'm drawing, I actually like um, a brush because it gives me a variety of strokes. And I love having that thin and thick line when I am drawing. So Okay, so Kelly, I'm going to look at some of your chat here. Nan says, great age. I know, life begins at 40, right? I keep saying that. <laughs> I turned 20, I said, life begins at 20. Then we became 30, now it's 40. Hey, my life. <laughs> here we go. Kelly said she loves, thank you. Happy early birthday. Thank you, Kelly. And she loves using traveler's notebooks as well. I'm glad. Okay, so if you guys are going to use a brush tip today, I'd like to do a little bit of exercises because when we're doing any types of doodling, I know we're going to use a pencil today, but really it's important to understand your tools. And I think this is one thing that we, we often disregard the practice because I know I am, I am the same as like when I buy a new tool, I just want to go jump and create already. And then, you know, I make mistakes and I'm like, you know, this is not a good pen, <laughs> but really what it is, is like you, you don't spend enough time with your new tool. So for example, the brush pen, brush pen is such a fabulous tool, but it is a little tricky. And, you know, some people may say, well, it, it's just for lettering. No, it's really not. I use it for many different types, not just myself, many different artists um, out there loves to use many different types of tips. And, you know, I personally love to use a brush pen because like what I said, I can create thin and thick lines. So when you're doing any types of doodling, um, we tackled this before in our, one of our past classes, you know, the basic of doodling. Basically, it's just using some simple shapes. And so look at this. I have a thin and a thick line. I'm going to try and zoom in if I can. So there's a thicker line and then there's a thin line. And the same principle goes to when you're doing your lettering. And I know a lot of you here, you know, attend a lot of our classes. So you know, and you understand now that when every time I would write towards me, I would apply a little bit of pressure. Now we all write differently. You know, we have different uh, amount of pressure that we use when we're writing. I personally write super thick, I mean, super heavy. And so I get this extra thickness of strokes just because I know I press on my pens a little bit too much. And so it, it gives me, um, it always helps me to slow down and understand, okay, lay, I know that you write heavy, so pay attention to how much pressure you're actually applying. Because if I apply too much pressure, everything's just going to be thick. And so every time you do a downstroke or that motion when you're writing towards you, that is when you're supposed to apply a little bit of pressure. And then use the tip of your brush pen and apply really light pressure to create a thin stroke. But notice how this one, my thick stroke is a little too thick and my thin stroke is a little too thin. So we don't really want that too. We want that, just that equal amount. I shouldn't say equal because we wanna have a variety of the thick and the thin line. So make sure you just apply a little bit of pressure, ease up lift your pen and then use the tip and then just light pressure. There we go. And so when, before you do any type of writing, lettering, drawing, you wanna do a little bit of exercises like this, just straight lines, diagonal lines, do a little bit of wavy lines because once we start drawing later, you're gonna realize that we're just using basic shapes like this half circles, letter C's, dashes, scallops, dash lines. And this, what you're doing is you're actually building um, this connection between your brain and your hand where your hand will actually follow what your brain will tell you. <laughs> because sometimes we think like we're doing things, but our hands are not. So when you exercise, when you practice just a little bit like this, you're also understanding how much pressure you're applying. So it makes you intentional 
with every stroke that you make. And so with these little things, even up until now, trust me, before I started this classes, I was drawing and I was making, doing a little bit of my warm ups and all these because it's super important understanding how much width and how much thickness this brush pen can make as well. And how thin will it go? And how much pressure do you need to apply to create these thin lines, right? And so just a little bit of warm ups. And we're almost ready to create our cute character for today. So for some of you here, I'm sure that you're familiar that I really, really love doing some kawaii characters. I mean, because first, it's easy. Second, it's super cute. Third, because I love it. <laughs> and so, well, you being here today tells me that you love some cute kawaii characters too. And when I'm doing some type of kawaii, like what I said, I just use basic shapes, basic shapes. And I also, I wanna remind you that when we're doing this, uh, before we do this, I'd like to remind you that I am not an artist when I first started um, doing illustration and lettering and drawings, but with practice, I have been doing this for many years. And trust me, it didn't happen overnight. So please don't expect that tomorrow you'll be an expert and you're going to replace me teaching these classes. Not yet. Okay. We still have a lot of practice to go. So some of these are just our basic warm ups that we did probably previously in part of our class. So we have some kawaii characters in here when we did that kawaii doodles. So this is one of my just play around notebook. So I do my letterings and all that. Okay, so for today, the character that we're gonna create is we're gonna create a chipmunk or, um, and with holding a nut, and we're gonna draw a very, um, very cute tree. It's not really cute. It's more like, um, th there's many different types. A whimsical, that's the term that I was looking for. A whimsical tree is what we're gonna create. So we're gonna create a cover page for the month of September. If you want, of course, you can change it to October, um, but let's just say September because it's the month of September. This is my pencil. And then I will also be using the Faber-Castell, the gold Faber pencils. Now, I just wanted to quickly show you guys if you go to the store to Michael's and you see two and you say one is gold Faber and one, the other one is gold Faber aqua. I just want to remind you that the aqua one is actually a watercolor pencil. It's water soluble. So basically you can use it with water. This one is a colored pencil that is more oil based. And so you cannot blend this with water, but you know, the same, type of blending that you're going to use with other colored pencils as well. So the colors that I have, look at this gorgeous fall colors. Um, these were included in your worksheets, but I'm just going to go over them real quick. I have 199 black, the 183, the 176. I have a warm gray, the 273. I have 166, 167, 118, 283. 131, 187, 132, and 192. If you don't have these colors, you can use the colors of your liking, as long as it's like more fall, because our drawing today is gonna be really a cute fall theme, all right? So you can use this type um, of illustration too, to create other types of project, for example, like a card, a poster, a printable, um, a wall art, you know, it doesn't have to be for bullet journaling also. All right, so let's get started. I talked a lot today, I promise. I think I only had three cups of coffee, but we're good. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So I know this is the most scariest part is that empty page. It, it always, it's like drives me nuts. I do this all the time. It's like every time I see an empty page, I'm like, oh God, what am I gonna do now? All right, so let's divide this page into four. So basically, let's just create an imaginary line in the middle. Now, to plan a composition, to plan a what you want to do, first is come up with that idea. What is our idea? I said we're going to do a fall theme. So, of course, I made the thinking much easier. <laughs> so we're going to do a fall theme here. We have our tree on the side. 
We all know how to make a tree. Let's do this. One branch going up. Look at this. And I'm going to go down here. And how I'm not trying to make this perfect, just like this. Everything, all the lines are mostly wiggly. Just like that. So it looks more like a graph. It's kind of like that heart thing. Like, I'm beating, my heart's beating. So nothing super fancy, all right? Because what we want to do is just take that fear off the empty page, that blank page. So this is the branch, believe it or not. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't look like it. And then we're just going to keep adding branches. So of course, the more it goes to the center of our tree, it just gets a little bit wider. Like that. And then you can keep adding as many as you'd like, as long as the top is thinner and it goes slightly wider when you go to the closer to the base or for the body of the tree. I'm sure there's like a more technical correct term. And then here, try to add a little bit of smaller ones, sticking out like that. Like this, and then I'll do this one over there. Okay. And then if it's not perfect right now, trust it's okay, because we're going to make sure that everything looks good later. And I know that this is looking some not super hot. So I'm going to adjust the width of this one to make sure. Also, when you're sketching, try not to add too much pressure so you can erase much easier. All right. So we have this one. I tried to adjust my um, brightness, but let me know if it's still a little bit too bright. We can fix that. We go. There we go. Probably better. Okay, then we're, I'm going to add a little bit of just roots. And I'm going to do this by where I, by where I stopped the bottom and I'm just going to do this again creating kind of like a graph or kind of like a wave just like that and I will close it in on the right side here we go and then to make this a little bit more whimsical we're going to add some textures inside our tree but before that we're going to add our let's add a little bit of a another character inside a tree. So let's add an owl here. I'm gonna draw an oval inside my tree. There we go. And then we're gonna put in an owl inside. So to create an owl, notice the top of the oval, we're going to repeat that same shape, but of course much smaller because we're going to put it in inside the oval. So follow that same shape, this one. So you just add another one, right? And then I'm going to add, to try and zoom in, see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Here we go. So I'm just gonna add two small ears, a triangle, but not too pointy at the top, just slightly rounded on the top, just like that. All right, and then two circles for the eyes. Of course, owls have big eyes. So not circle, I'm sorry, oval, two oval. And then um, like what we did with the body of the owl, we're gonna repeat that basically following the shape of the eyes as well. So we're just adding another one inside. So it's almost just a repetition, right? It's like, I know when you look at the drawing and it's all complete, it seems so overwhelming, but really it is just using the basic shapes over and over again. So now we're, I'm gonna add some half circle on the left, but look at this one. It's kind of like um, 
a letter C, but, or a belly of the B. And this one is a letter C. All right. And then I'm going to fill in this area right here with black. It's kind of like funny eyes. And then for the nose, you can choose to make like a small round shape in there, or you want to make it a little pointy, like a triangle upside down, like that. And then for the wings, imagine kind of like creating a scallop, but going down. So one, like a hump, another one going down, and then another one going down. Just take it one step at a time. And I'll do the same thing, but the opposite. One hump, another one, and then another one. Just like that. So I have a little owl. I'm going to leave it there. And then later we can feel, fill this part right here. But just to see, sometimes it's nice to have a visual of how everything is looking. All right. So now to add some textures inside our tree, we can actually do this, choose to do this later, part of our coloring. But if you just want, you kind of just like add some lines inside and make sure you play around. Don't overthink this one. Uh, what's gonna make it wrong is when you try to overthink too much, really it's just adding lines to it. And I'm saying this with so much love because I do the same thing. <laughs> It's kind of like, how am I going to do that wavy lines? Lay, it's just a wavy line. Just add a wavy line. And from this one, I'm kind of like try to make a little cave like this. So I went up with wavy lines and then like going down. And then I'll follow that. Same thing. But just really a lot of jaggedy lines there. And then I'll do this again. Play around with your shape. See, and then this one, I'll bring it up like that. So what we're doing and what we're learning here is we're adding some textures inside our illustration. And this is a, what you call uh, a whimsical type of drawing as well. All right, and we're done. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we still have a lot to go. How is it 530 already, guys? My goodness. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> now, so to create our cute character in here, this is going to be um, a cute chipmunk, I think. <laughs> Hopefully, it turned out to look like a chipmunk. <laughs> so what I try to do when I'm drawing some body, uh, some a body, I should say, a body, you, whether it's um, a person, a character, or an animal, I try to do the shapes first. So I know that my head is going to be a circle. I'm going to draw that. So I'll start with that. Really nothing super special. And I'll try to draw the body in here. Like that. Just so I know the placement. And then I'll draw the feet right here. So I know that it's kind of like hiding behind the tree, not really, but kind of like that. And then I'll add the arm. So just use your basic shapes. And then I'll add the ear. I know the ears are gonna be much smaller later, but we'll just add that. And then from here, I'm going to add like a letter V going down. So from the end of one ear to the next, zoom that in so you can see. So just bringing the lines down just like that. So like a letter V. And I'll draw a nose. And for the tail, we'll find the half, the middle, part of the body and then we're going to draw if you're going to do it to the right then you're going to go down like this but I know I don't have much space and I really want to highlight the tail so from here I'm going to create like kind of curving line bring it down 
bring it down like this. And it's gonna curl up. So kind of like making a spiral like that, or a number six, really. See, it's like basic shapes, numbers and all that. I remember when my daughter was little, she would be um, watching like um, a YouTube video where they would draw and doodle based on the shape of a number, sometimes a number, like a number seven. And it's so fascinating to see that. And it's, it's really just the way it is because as adults, we try to overcomplicate things. It's kind of like, how do I draw a chipmunk? But really, it's just kind of like this. You draw a number six, it's like I'm bringing this down. All right, so now that we have the basic shape in there, is it looking like a chipmunk? Not really, but we're gonna figure that out later. <laughs> it's looking funky. And then I'm, we're gonna draw the nuts inside. We're gonna make it big because this is kind of cartoonish. So we can really do whatever we want. So just that shape, slightly curved line, not, not really curved, but just slightly. And following that shape as well, that slightly curved line, and then close it in on the sides. Notice how my lines are not sharp and strong. Everything's just slightly curving. And here we're going to create a letter U. For this one, all right? Zoom it in again so we can see. And I'm gonna add the top like that. Now we can use some diagonal lines to draw and add some texture. Is this a squirrel? Is it a chipmunk? I don't know. All right, so now that I have my basic shape in here, this is where I would do my adjustments because this is like just to do the placement. I know where it's at. I know the shape. Now to create a more whimsical or much cuter character, what happens is that I notice with my personal style of drawing, what I notice is that when the head is slightly larger than the rest of the body, it just appears much cuter. I don't know, but it just works. So now I'm looking at my drawing and it just looks like it's very balanced. You know, the head is um, proportioned to the body. So when I do my adjustments, I know that I want to make my head just slightly larger or do the opposite, make my body just slightly smaller. So maybe you can try that as well. We can try it together. Here we go. So when I'm doing my adjustment, I want to lighten my first initial sketch and I'm using my Faber-Castell kneadable eraser. I love this one because I don't have to shake the whole table and then I don't have to create too much eraser sud. So I can just kind of roll over it or use it just as a regular eraser. Sometimes I kind of like kiss, touch and go like this. All right. So now you cannot see it and I can make my adjustments now. So looking at this, the body is really just perfect. So I think I'm gonna adjust my head. I'm gonna make the head just slightly larger. And I want you to see, okay, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go slightly wider and I'm gonna try my hardest to still draw with light pressure. And this is one that I, my personal touch, I add a little bit of cheek. Notice here. So just kind of like I bring out that line just slightly. And I do it like this. So everything's just more round, right? Try not to make that sharp line. So make yours just a little slightly curved. Can you see that better? 
So it has this little <laughs> cheek, kind of like my cheeks. <laughs> Cute. I'm so lovable. Here we go. Let's add that slight cheek in there. And then I'll adjust my ears. I know that it's not too big. So look, just like that. And I'll do the same thing. We'll do that letter V again. But instead of like one straight letter V, notice how I'm doing my lines are just slightly bitty curved, just a little bit. Almost to a point where I can't really call it uh, a curved line because there's just a slight, and that little, that slight change will make a lot of difference. So when you're trying to do um, a change in your drawing adjustment, try to do it in short strokes, smaller strokes, because I think that's one of my biggest mistakes when I was first beginning, you know, starting to learn and adjust my drawings. Proportion first is super hard. And then second is that when I'm making changes, I'm making it super big. And so the change is big too. I didn't realize that just a little adjustment goes a very long way. Now I'm adding just a little bit of texture inside. I don't even know what to call it. Is it chipmunk or a squirrel? <laughs> I'm just going to say squirrel because there you go. I'm just going to say squirrel. No one's, no one's going to stop me. <laughs> now, because I know that my arm is going to go in front of the nut. And so because I have my guide, our first sketch of the nut, the nut, <laughs> So I'm going to go over here and add my arm first. So from that neck, bringing it down, just do it one stroke at a time. Don't be in a hurry. Just adding a little bit here and there like that. And then my hand is big and chunky. See, so we're drawing on top of that nut. We can choose to just make his arm, one arm going down. So instead of holding it with two hands, he's just going to hold this with one. Now I can do my nut, my acorn nut. Here we go. I'm going to miss Arkansas this fall season. So we moved to Texas and I know that I'm gonna miss the trees. It's gonna be worth a drive. We'll go back and just drive and look at the beautiful fall trees, the autumn. I love fall season. Now I'm just adding my diagonal lines again for the textures inside. Well, I can, we can do that later, but you know what, it's okay. Now for the belly, we're gonna make it just going down. Make a letter U. Notice how much difference it makes. And when you're doing small strokes, just this to complete your line, instead of doing one line, you know, one big line, try to do it in short strokes like this while completing your round. Even when you're doing a circle, when sketching, try to do it short strokes to complete that one big shape because it's just kind of like life. You know, one thing at a time. So in drawing and lettering, it's really one stroke at a time also. Okay, I don't know why she, he's looking so mischievous right now. <laughs> my squirrel has this look as it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, maybe it's, I don't know. <laughs> it's like up to no good, kind of like my daughter. <laughs> there we go. Oh man. Okay, and then I'm going to add the other arm, and this one is just going to go on its side. So we're just doing short strokes again like this. And then it's kind of like behind the belly because its belly is a little chunky. So we'll do that. Like that. And then for the leg, it's gonna go wider at the bottom, but small, again, short strokes, remember. So I'm gonna add here. And I think this is where always, like what I said, proportion is hard. So 
try one way. And then if it doesn't work out, erase it. That's the beauty of the eraser. So I think from not exactly where his arm is or his hand, but slightly below it, I'm just going to add this slanted line going down like that. And then we're just going to do a like a little hump in there for its leg. And then part of his body will be hidden behind the tree. So it's just kind of like that. I don't know. I think it's the eyes that's looking mischievous. <laughs> well, super happy with that. Look, I'm going to change it. Notice how this is going to change it. Now it's definitely up to no good. I kind of added that hood on top. I made my circle just slightly bigger. And then I'm going to add like a little curve on top. It's so cute. Look how it changed that. See how little changes can like make a big difference. I like that. And so I'm going to do my number six now for the tail. Just like that. And I'm bringing it down like this. Oh my goodness, so cute. Super cute. <laughs> Jennifer said, <laughs> it's looking like a little evil. <laughs> Is it the eyes? Maybe you can adjust the eyes like I did too. Yeah, try to change the eyes. Maybe kind of like a squinting <laughs> eyes or we're just lashes or... <laughs> Something, something simple. Change it, change it. <laughs> but it's okay though. If it's looking a little mischievous, it's like, hmm, what am I gonna do with that owl up there? <laughs> it's like mine is looking like it's looking <laughs> at the owl. Like, hey, don't be nice, be nice. Don't do anything to the owl. <laughs> and so I know it's fall, but you know what? We can pretend that there's still leaves. Hey, there's going to be leaves for fall anyways, a little bit, right? Right. So just adding, and you know, when you're drawing, when you're creating a scene like this, or we're creating your characters like that, um, I think a little bit of that um, small details, adding a little bit small details in there. Sometimes that's just like that one thing you're missing. Like something's missing. Something is missing. And you know, a little bit of grass in here. Maybe we can add a little bit of grass in here too. You know, so I don't know, but just, just try and play around with that. Now for our tree, I know it's fall. So we need a little bit of brown in here. We want to add just a few leaves. All right, Lee, oh my God, 544. I don't want to finish this class. <laughs> I feel like I'm super rushed, but I'm really not being slow. So we're just going to add some leaves sticking out from your tree. Make sure you add those like that. And I think it's the way that I like to show you guys really start from the basic instead of just hey, you can trace this one and then let's just, you know, color. But I think it's important that you understand the building, the character, really starting um, um, from the very basic of just that warm-ups alone that we did earlier. Those are really important. So right now I'm just adding some leaves. I'm just adding the basic shape leaves. You can create um, another shape of leaves, but I'm, I'm okay with this one. I'm not angry, just a small little one. Here we go. And play around with the direction of your leaves. You know, others are like facing to the right, others are facing to the left and all that. And so this is, I would normally create a drawing like this for a cover page is when we're gonna add the month of September, some important dates. For example, if you're gonna use this for your bullet journal, and so we can add a little bit because everything is right now is to our right. And we want it to be cohesive. Um, I mean, we really want to, how am I going to say? What's the word I'm, think, I'm thinking? We, we want to spread out 
in this whole page. So we want to add a little bit of something to our left as well. You want to add some, maybe some bushes to the left, you know, um, maybe a little tiny snail, um, a mushroom perhaps because it's very fall. So look, it's just an upside down U or a frown, just like that. And I'm gonna close it in with again, slightly slanted line and then slanted lines again, narrow to the top, goes wider as you go down. Just close it in with that line, sorry, like that. And then we'll add some texture to our mushroom like that. And then add more grass. But now we have something else going on on the left side as well, right? And I'm, I just connected it with just a jaggedy wiggly line like that. All right, now we're gonna add a banner. For um, the banner, you can choose to just really make it simple, just kind of like a shape, really. But if you want to do a banner, draw a straight line like this, parallel to one another. And this is why I love using a grid, even a dot grid, because it just gives me the perfect guide that I need. All right, so we have two lines, horizontal. I'm going to close it in both sides, just like that. And I'm gonna add a line in here, another horizontal, I think mine is too low. I'll bring this up a little bit, a perfect middle there, like that. And then I'm gonna do follow that, just do a parallel below it. And this is where we're adding the ribbon, both ends. And so we wanna add, close it in with a letter V or whatever you wanna call that. Like this. It's kind of like when you're doing a letter K to the right, but just two diagonal lines going down in the middle. And then this one, we're gonna bring this up, add a line there, add a line on the other side as well. I think mine has to go a little bit wider here. I'm gonna adjust it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then from this corner, I'm going up to this corner right, or this corner going down, whichever one. So we're just gonna close that in and do the same, the opposite side, just like that. And then you wanna shade that later, but that's where you're gonna put your month of September. Oh, it's long, oops. Libra season. Do we have any um, Libras in the house? I know it's still Virgo, but oh, I'm having a hard time feeling it because it's September. My goodness. Okay, what do I always teach you? Try to write the first and the last letter. All right, so sip. So you can see, can gauge how much space you have. There we go. I never follow my own teaching. All right, we have September in there. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. All right, for this one now, I'm going to lighten it so we can proceed to our coloring because I swear we don't have time again. Don't leave me because we wanna finish this. I'm gonna lighten it, lighten it. So you can do your um, line art now. You can choose whichever tip fine liner um, you wanna use. Like what I said, I'm gonna use my brown 175 Pit Artist pen. You can, I love the Pit Artist because this is not going to bleed through. I've tried many different types of paper, trust me. And this one is 
the best, but even we're not using watercolor, you can use this with watercolor because these are um, India ink. So that means they're archival and they're also waterproof once they are dry. So for your tree, to make it look whimsical, again, try not to overthink it. Look at this. Just follow that jaggedy lines that you created earlier. It's going to give that appearance of a more whimsical look to it. And that's what we're aiming for today. That's what we're hoping for. Going down. We have so many fun classes this month. So please, I hope you'll be able to join me again next week. Um, I, I don't memorize it on top of my head, <laughs> but I'm sure Chanel can help us. Uh, it's in my planner somewhere. <laughs> You've seen it. I have the, that schedule, but <laughs> we have so many fun classes this month. So make sure to check out Michael's website to register for the next class. Right. And then I'm going to do my oval first for my owl. <clears throat> um, for much smaller details, sometimes it's hard to use the brush because, like what I said, I write really, really heavy. And so for small, finer details, I love using a much smaller tip. Like this one is the super fine or the letter S, and it has a 0 0.3 tip but I'm using the same color because it just so happened that this one comes in a super fine. Not all colors are available in different tips, but the black one has a lot. Um, so the Pit Artist pens, they come in many different sets that you can check out. Oh, my circle is looking a little funky. And then now to fill that part in, I am just, going to use the brush like that. So I can cover a much larger space. And I think that's why I love the brush tip is that if I need to find a thin one, I need to create a thin, I can still do it. It might just be just slightly harder, but then if I wanna create thicker strokes, then I can by just applying a little bit more pressure like that. Ooh, so cute. And then I'm gonna add the texture inside. All right, I'm not gonna overthink this one. So even if the lines are like not perfect, look at this, some I have like the texture from the brush tip. And I think that just added a little bit more visual interest to my drawing. So sometimes I have like imperfect, incomplete dashed lines like that. We'll just add it here. And if you have the Pit Artist pens, please feel free to use it also for the coloring part if you want. Comes in variety of colors. I think now we have like 60 something. Miss Krista from Faber Castell is here with us. So you can probably tell us that in the chat section also. There's like metallic colors as well. So do your line art, guys. I'm not in a hurry. You are. No, I am too. <laughs> Yeah, eek, so cute, super duper cute. And right now I am contemplating if I wanna use the brush tip for my squirrel or the super fine. And I'm just gonna bring this grounding line. I'm gonna complete the whole thing connected to that tree. I think I'm gonna use the super fine. <laughs> Cause I might make a mess and let me zoom it in so you guys can really see. There we go. We have 60 colors of the pen and the 12 nibs. Oh my goodness, that's a lot, 12. And then we have six metallic colors as well. 
All right, so for my little squirrel, I'm gonna do this. I don't wanna be in a hurry, but I have to be in a hurry also. And also guys, if you are creating with me today, would love to see your work. So please, you know where to find me. My handle is at Mommy Lay on Instagram or Facebook. I'd love to hear from you. And also you can use the hashtag make it with Michaels. That one way I can really find all your creations. Here we go. That's so cute. And also please don't forget to follow us on social media. Faber Castell USA. You can also use the hashtag Faber Castell. We'll find some of your work. And make sure to check out our blog because we have a lot of um, inspiring blog posts in there that will help you in your art journey. Here we go. And I'm gonna add the texture inside. It's so cute. And then, oops, I almost forgot that diagonal line inside my nut. Just like that. And then I'll do my banner later because I want to show you guys how I'm going to color this one. Now for the outer line of my chipmunk or squirrel, <laughs> I don't even know what this is anyway. A squirrel tip chipmunk. <laughs> um, this one. So I'm just going to add a little bit of width in the stroke. Look at this. Now you have this perfect drawing that you can color in. You can use some watercolors, depending, of course, on the paper that you use. But I think it was fun that we were able to really start from the basic. Now you can create your own characters based on from what we've learned today. So I'm just adding a little bit of extra thickness in here. I think just having that thin and thick lines, it really adds that so much interest to your character. And this. I should have just used a brush, huh? Because <laughs> I think I'm adding, <laughs> I'm adding it everywhere now. But you know what? I can't help it. This is just my favorite, is that having my thin and thick in there. That's what I love about this brush pen. Just like that. It's so cute. All right, now you have this perfect piece that you can color in. You can use some watercolors in here. Um, I'm just going to use a little bit of my, oh, these are so creamy. It just glides so perfectly. I know I'm adding a little bit of green here, but the gold Faber are very blendable. And I'm gonna add here just a little bit of orange so I, you can see. You wanna start with this light color first. And when you're applying your first initial color, you wanna make sure you go light, just really light on the pressure. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of orange because fall is so beautiful like that where the trees are changing, the leaves are, and it's just gorgeous. And it, it's a nature's way to remind us that, guess what? Change can be really beautiful too. It is frightening, but it is beautiful, isn't it? And then I'm going back with the same green color and I'm gonna blend everything. So you can see how blendable these pencils are. And they are archival. And so that means your colors are gonna remain vibrant like this for a very long time. So they're light fast, super fun. And then what the fun thing about this is that you can use this as your first, um, or you can use either one. You can use this or the Gold Faber Aqua. You can use this as your line art 
the colored pencils instead of the pit artist. But as you can see, when you're doing any type of illustration like this, like what I said, play around with your tools. Don't be afraid. But as long as you understand, because this is oil-based, so that means you can use a watercolor on top of these. And these are not going to move. These are going to stay in here. And then you can add some layers of watercolors. Then you're already doing some mixed media. But honestly, what we did was pencil and then markers, the pit artist. That's mixed media also. Because it's in the name itself, mixing media that you are using. All right. But anyways, guys, I know our time is so limited when we're doing all these free classes, but we are so grateful for you joining us today. I hope that you were able to learn a whole lot and we're going to do the same thing again next week. We're going to learn a whole lot more and have fun. If you have any questions, you guys know where to find me. I'm on social media, you know, um, any questions about the products that we use today, I'll be so gladly to help and assist you guys. But here we go. Oh my God, it turned out so cute. Yay! Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, thank you for spending some time with us. Again, if you have any questions, please don't you know hesitate to reach out. But thank you again, Michaels. Thank you, Faber-Castell USA. Until next time, you guys, we'll see you again soon.